was watching a, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, that Andrew Cuomo show. You ever watch that? Oh, yeah, every day. Yeah, you watch that Andrew Cuomo show? I like it. That's a good show. It's yeah. pretty good. It's not bad. And uh, he's pretty good. He seems to, uh, 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 he seems to have a handle on uh, the material. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like he seems well prepared. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they got this part of the show that at the end of the show, at the end of each show, he does this thing. It's like he takes questions from the audience. Yes. You know, yes. it's it's like like Carol Burnett. You know the way Carol Burnett used to do that. Remember that? Sort of. Yes. Well, she would open it up to, like she'd finish her monologue. So that's what he does. Like he finishes his monologue just like Carol Burnett, <laughs> and then he opens it up to the audience for questions. You know, and, and the audience uh, they got like a few people sitting there. Yes. And then they ask him questions, and he responds. You know, he ad libs uh, the Andrew Cuomo, and he seems to, uh, you, know, you know, he usually comes up with a pretty good response. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, he, he seems to know uh, something about what he's doing. Uh, and then there's this other guy. I don't know if you've seen this. Other, there's another guy who's got a daily, uh, uh, like, uh, coronavirus show. Yes. And uh, he, he looks like he just wandered in on, off the street oh on this, like he didn't go to rehearsal. Yeah. He's just winging it, this guy. He doesn't know anything. He see, and he seems he seems angry. Oh, it's like always yeah. yelling at people. Oh. I, it's I, I don't I don't I don't quite get that show. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I understand what that show is all about. You might want to stick with the Cuomo. Show. I've been watching the Cuomo show. The Cuomo show is not bad. So uh, so today on the Andy Cuomo show, he's uh, basically saying, you know, we've been doing this like a month now. Yeah. This is today. This is this is Thursday, right? It is. We're in Thursday. This is our nineteenth show. Because when this whole damn thing started, yes. you said to me, you said, Dave Koenig, I don't want you moping around the house just getting fat and getting on everyone's nerves. Aww. You know, like ordinary times. I want you to get something going. <laughs> Focus on something. I don't remember fat coming. No, you didn't. You, you implied it. You didn't actually say it. <laughs> and uh, you said, why don't you do a show on Facebook every night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, on your Facebook page. And then you could archive them on another page called The Dave Koenig Show Streaming Live so that people can watch the reruns. And you know what? You remember what I said. What you I said, ah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do a Facebook show. Nobody wants, who needs that? Right? Well, yeah. But, uh, but we've been doing but this. Here, show. We here we are. This is our 19th show. Wow. So we've been doing this. This is our fourth week. We've been doing four weeks of this. Am I right? I know it's great. So I was watching the Andy Cuomo show, and uh, uh, he seemed to th- he seemed to think we were probably going to be doing another four weeks of this. Well, yeah, I yeah. thought this would be uh, I thought we'd be in and out a couple of weeks of this nonsense, and we'd be we'd be done. But apparently, I was wrong. We got extended. We got extended, <laughs> according to Andy Cuomo. We're here on the Facebook Live show. That's right. We got extended another four weeks, so we're kind of like at the halfway point. We're at the halfway point here. Good. Yeah. That's good? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Well, you're ready, but I'm not, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, you know, now I'm starting to think, like, well, what happens when, when we get back out there? Do I, you know, what happens to the show business? Because I want to get back get back to work. Right. You know. So I was talking to my agent. You know my agent? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he got a phone, so... Uh, <laughs> So things ought to pick up right about now, and uh, you know, and he's saying, he's saying, Dave, uh, when this is all over, you got to be ready, man. You got to be ready. And uh, he, of course, he wants me to get new headshots. You oh, know, okay. That's the thing. The agents always want you to get they new headshots. That, yeah. You know. And I said to him, I said, I said, Phil, that's his name, Phil, <laughs> Phil the agent. I said, Phil, congratulations on getting a phone first and foremost. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really going to help your business. And uh, I said, secondly, I said, you know, I've been doing this my whole life. Because mm-hmm. as you know, honey, I started out as an obnoxious young child actor. I know. So, I mean, I've been doing this for, uh, you know, I started when I was 10. Yes. So, I mean, I've been doing this at least 37 or 38 years. That sounds ballparkish. It's, a, it's an awfully large ballpark. Isn't it? It's a large, empty ballpark. So uh, I've been doing this uh, uh, for quite some time. I said, Phil, do I really need headshots at this stage? Can I just Photoshop another chin on the old headshots and just leave it at that? Oh, I, I hit the. Uh, oh, there we go. I hit. I hit. I hit. I hit, I hit the table for emphasis, and the phone kind of oh went gosh. wacky on you me there. Be careful with this technology. You gotta be careful with it. So, but I'm excited because I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. For show business to start up again. I'm starting show business up myself. I think you are. This is it, man. This is it. And I'll tell you something. I'm going out there and I'm doing this show, this show that you're watching right now. Let me tell you something. This is the kickoff oh. uh, to my big North American tour. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be playing all the big comedy clubs. I hope you come out and see me. I'll be playing, uh, let's see, I'll be playing uh, uh, Tickles, Giggles, uh, Chuckles, Chortles. Sniffles, snuffles, snortles, guffaws, involuntary coughing spasms. Uh, let's see, I'll be playing uh, the funny bone, the funny clavicle, the funny cartilage, uh, cuckoos, zanies, 
crazies, psychos, psychotics, deranged outpatients, bipolar manic depressives, the comedy corner, the comedy zone, the comedy house, the comedy halfway house, the comedy co-op, the comedy illegal sublet, the comedy Quonset hut, the comedy abattoir, and then I'll be wrapping it all up next Thursday right back here on Facebook Live. So I hope you come see me on the big tour. I think they'll come. And you know what that means, honey? What? That means it's time for the Dave Koenig Show oh on Facebook Live. Yay. Every Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. we provide you, the American public, with 15 to 17 minutes of stress-reducing nonsense and comedy. I know, we do. And on the show, of course, tonight we have, right here, sitting six feet to my, my right, a safe social distance, my co-host, the lovely bride of Koenig, Susan Koenig. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody, of course, is Susan's copyrighted catchphrase. If you try to use the words hi, every, or body in any sentence, way, <laughs> shape, or form, she will sue your ass from here to Timbuktu. <laughs> And also on the show, uh, we will have an appearance by the, uh, the Not Ready for Dave Koenig players. They'll be here. Okay. We have a funny uh, sketch. Uh, we're all set. We're going to do like a Harry Potter sketch. Oh, that's funny. Like a funny Harry Potter sketch. I like it. You know, that's kind of funny, like sketch comedy kind of stuff we do. You know, like you know, you know, you know how like Harry Potter keeps getting older and older in each each. Yes. We had a great idea. It's a funny idea. So we're going to do one like where he's really, really old. <laughs> it's called Harry Potter and the Goblet of Metamucil. That's that's gonna be. Fun. I'm gonna play Harry Potter. That's you know, funny. you know. I'm gonna be like they're gonna put me in a funny Harry Potter hat, and yeah. I'm gonna be like all like, uh, hey, governor, <laughs> I'm a magical wizard and such. You know, right? Oi, mate, I wave my wand at you, right? That's great. I know a lot about Harry Potter. I like that sketch. And, I know a lot about it. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Dave Coney dancers will be here, of course. Oh, good. Yeah, you know what they're going to do? They're going to, because we couldn't get them on the show, because uh, we're broadcasting an iPhone uh, a portrait, yeah. and uh, they need landscape. That's all there is to it. They need landscape. <laughs> yeah. And I can't, I can't figure out how to do landscape. So, uh, uh, and plus, they're, they're all in quarantine. Right. So um, what they're going to do is, I was talking to Gladys, the uh, dance captain. Yeah, how's she doing? She's not doing well. She's got, uh, she had her, her elbows removed. Oh, my God. So she has no knees, no elbows. Wow. She has two artificial hips. She's an elderly woman. She, Gladys is the dance captain of the troupe. She's 78 years old, <laughs> and she's still dancing. But uh, God knows what's holding that woman up because she has no cartilage and no bones, no bone structure at all. Flexible. She's very flexible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's very flexible. And uh, so she, uh, what they're going to do is the dancers are going to take a series of still photographs of them dancing, and they're going to upload them to some kind of photo sharing site, like a Google photo type or of thing. Picasso. Yeah, Picasso. It's all going to be on Picasso. And then what you're going to have to do, each individual viewer will have to download these photos and uh, put them together in some kind of PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And then if you, just, if you just zip by really fast, it'll look like motion. Or oh, something. that's actually good. Yeah, yeah, it'll be headache-inducing and, and time-consuming. But uh, And also on the show, we're going to have, oh, a big celebrity guest. Uh, oh. We're very excited. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight on the show. Who's that? Uh, Melvin Exotic. Melvin Exotic. <laughs> uh, his actual name is Shreve Vogel. His okay. name is Melvin okay. Shreve Vogel, but he's Melvin Exotic. He is, uh, he is Kenosha, Wisconsin's... Uh, he, he comes from Kenosha, Wisconsin, <laughs> and he is their, uh, the premier uh, owner and operator yeah. of, uh, of Kenosha, Wisconsin's only uh, private wildlife uh, zoo. I had no idea. Uh, Melvin Exotic from Kenosha, Wisconsin. <laughs> And uh, he operates the zoo. I was talking to him on the phone, and I was asking. He, apparently, he operates the zoo out of his apartment. Okay. And he said it's it's small operation at first. He said he's just kind of getting it off the ground. I said, "How many animals you got, Melvin?" Uh, and he said, uh, "We got we got one so oh. far. We got a my um, we got a Rottweiler. Oh. A Rottweiler with uh, some kind of sensitive gums. He's got like a periodontic issue though. Oh. Yeah. So the dog needs special like special doggy sensitive uh, toothpaste. So he's got a dog. There, there's apparently there's some controversy. Yeah. <laughs> there is some, there is some controversy that he's just some guy sitting in his apartment with his dog, uh, but he, no, he claims that it's a wildlife zoo and he wants to come on the show and tell us all about it. Well, the animal parks are usually controversial. They are it's very controversial. <laughs> so Melvin Exotic will be here. We'll get to the bottom of all that, and uh, and uh, that's it. That's uh, that's uh, all the exciting that's stuff we got planned show. for there. That's a big show. I'm so glad you tuned in. So, honey, I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, you know, when this is all done, we've got to get back to show business. Wow. But show business is going to change after this, I think. Okay. I think there's going to be some changes. I think, uh, like, I used to do a lot of cruise ship gigs, yes. you know. I used to perform on the cruise ships. And I think that might change a little bit. The cruise, right, ship, a little bit. cruise ship industry a little bit. De- My last cruise ship gig 
It's probably just as well because I don't want to go back on the ships myself. Okay. I, I, they, they, I did, my last cruise ship gig was uh, not very good. It wasn't a good. It wasn't one of the premier lines. You know, I was on a one of the one of the uh, one of the lesser lines. It was uh, Bob's uh, Discount uh, Cruise Line and Auto Repair, <laughs> where you get a uh, you get a free uh, car air freshener with uh, every trip. <laughs> and it was bad. The, but the food on this cruise was bad. I'll tell you. It was oh not, man. It was not good. What? They served a vegetarian platter with beef. That was oh, wow. yeah. That's not really Their kosher meal was billed as partially kosher. Huh. It was a matzo ball soup with bacon bits. Oh, the food was not good. Oh, I don't know about that. No, neither do I. <laughs> the cabin they put me. They put me in the uh, one of the crew cabins way below deck. Yeah. You know, I I didn't even have a private room. I had to share it with the engine. That's how bad this cruise was, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. It's a bad cruise. Yeah. It was kind of cruise, kind of cruise that goes to places a little off the beaten path. Like where? Well, they have they advertise uh, explore exotic Newark, a cruise wow. to uh, Newark, <laughs> excursions to Dayton, Ohio. That's the kind of cruise ship this was. Wow. Doesn't seem geographically no, possible. Dayton. They advertise a transatlantic cruise does not include Atlantic Ocean. So I, you know, <laughs> it's kind of. But I got to get back to work. I got to get out there doing gigs. Yeah. Doing some show, if all my stand-up gigs got canceled, was, I did a show right before this all started. I did a show out in uh, uh, California. I was out in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, you, you remember when I went out to San Francisco? Sure. Lovely gig. You know, I didn't know. I hadn't been in California in years. Yeah. I didn't know. Did you know this? I did not know they have legalized marijuana now in the entire state of California. Yes. Did you know this? I had heard. I didn't know. We could tell on the plane coming in, though. Because uh, as we were arriving, the uh, the uh, captain came on. He said, "He said, oh, this is your pilot speaking. Prepare for your descent into San Francisco International Airport. And for those of you on the left side of the aircraft, if you look out your windows, you can see my house, man. Wow, that's what, that's what he said. It's groovy. That's what he said. It's like a groovy podcast. You got to give me a fake laugh on those. <laughs> You gotta at least give me a fake laugh, I'm or else. No, no, don't, don't absorb. Just fake laugh, or else I won't know how to go on to the next joke. I, I want to hear the rest of the joke. That was the rest of the joke. That was the entire joke. I got bad news for you. I already hit the punchline. We're moving on. I uh, know. I like that groovy pilot character. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When this is all over, though, things are going to change. Yeah. Uh, first of all, stand, I'm, I'm, it's probably just as well that all my stand-up gigs uh, got canceled. And, because I, as, they, they, it can be irritating. Yeah. It can be irritating. Here's the, here's the most irritating thing about performing stand-up comedy is when your friends come to see the show. Okay. And they always say the same thing before the show. They always say, hey, Dave, hey, Dave, you better be funny tonight oh. or we'll heckle you. <laughs> Why would you say that? I don't know. Why say that to a person? <laughs> Would you say that to me if I was a, a serious dramatic actor? Would you say, hey, Dave, we're coming to see you tonight in Death of a Salesman. You better be dramatic or we'll stand up in the theater and criticize you. That's right. They don't say that. You wouldn't say that to no. a person. No. No, of course not. <laughs> I might make a whole career change, though, when this is on. Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I got a couple of career ideas I'm, I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of becoming a, a celebrity stalker. I think that might be <laughs> a new career path for me, you know? Oh. No, you gotta you gotta hand it to the celebrity stalkers. They got they got a great work ethic. They got a, they write all those letters every day. They never take a day off. I mean, that's productivity. Yeah, I guess so. If I ran a business, I would hire nothing but celebrity stalkers because they they focus and wow. they they get to work. Okay. I wouldn't make. I don't think I'd make a very good celebrity stalker though. Why not? Well, first of all, the really good celebrities are already taken. Okay. You know, so <laughs> I'd probably end up st stalking like like Maury Povich. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And all that letter writing is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I wouldn't want. I, I might send like a like a an email, like okay. one, like like a stalking, just one, you know, like like, hey, Maury, I love you, I hate you, I want to kill you, <laughs> laugh out loud, <laughs> LOL, maniacally, you know. <laughs> what exactly is the career goal, Susan Koenig, my co-host? I ask you this: What is the what is the career goal of the celebrity stalker? I mean, if you, I get, if you really worked hard at it, right, and you became the top celebrity stalker in the business, you, and you'd become so famous that you'd, you'd end up having your own stalker. You'd have, you'd have your own celebrity stalker stalker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then you'd be the one getting mail every day, right? Dear Dave, I saw you stalking Maury Povich. Good work. P.S. I know where you live. You know? <laughs> That's true. That's a risk. We got to say hello to some of the people. Uh, oh, Unsteady Freddy is watching the show. I know. Unsteady Freddy, the the surf rock guru, is uh, watching the show. Mark Zeman is watching the show. Jack Patrick McGowan 
is watching the show. I'm going to guess, Jack. I'm just guessing. Italian? I'm usually very good at this. I'm usually good at that. Michael Collins is watching the show. Who else is watching Mark the show? Mark Barron is on. Mark Barron is here. And That's Christine Klein Scott. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, Rhoda Robinson Brown. All the kids are watching Julie the show. DeFeo. That's fantastic. Kathy Stowe. Oh, yeah, you know, you... I'm thinking when this is over, though, I might, like, another career change I'm thinking of. Yeah. Because I don't know about show business for me anymore. Anyway. This might be it for me. Aww. I think this Facebook Live show might be my my. No, I'm just thinking. People think... are loving it. Well, that's nice. I'm thinking I might. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. I, I might. Uh, I, I think I'd like to join the mafia. <laughs> no, I I really would. <laughs> no, the food. You get. I mean, the food. Oh, wow. the food. Yeah. And you get to wear those like really thin socks, right. like the really thin socks. <laughs> I would join a mafia just for the food and the socks. <laughs> I really would. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing, the only thing that's holding me back from joining the mafia is, is, is it seems awfully time consuming. Like the hours seem it's like really egregious. Hey, you gotta be on call. You gotta be on call the whole time, you know. And they have these long hours. They're always, you know, five o'clock in the morning. They're driving back from the diner. Ah, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Who needs that? I don't know. <laughs> I would join the mafia if they had. If you could just join for like a. If they had like a mafia reserves. I would join. Oh. Like, if you could just go, like, two weeks a year, you know, in the summer, <laughs> and then, like, maybe one weekend a month, you know. That's what I would do. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do any of the crime stuff, though. That no. seems, yeah, that seems messy. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't want to get involved with all that, you know, messy stuff, like, like killing people and everything. I think I, I would stay, I'd probably, I'd work in the office. I'd, I'd be in personnel. I'd, okay. be, I'd be an admin guy for Somebody's the mob. Do that. Yeah, I'd be back in the, back in the, uh, back in the office doing the, I would do the social media. I would help them with the social media, all I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. I could that'd handle it. That'd be great. You know, I could, like, do their Facebook, Mafia Facebook, you know, like, shout out to Vinny the Squealer, you know, hashtag hanging from a meat hook. <laughs> right? You know, like, Twitter that out, you know. <laughs> Look, Vinny Two Twins retweeted it. Hey, boss, I'm oh, doing wow. good. Hey, I'm doing He's got good. A lot of yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd run their Facebook page, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't send them any Farmville, though, or they'll, they'll unfriend you. That's right. If you know what I'm saying, they'll unfriend you. <laughs> What happened to Tony? Uh, Tony, I don't think you'll be seeing Tony in your news feed anymore, if you know what I mean. Oh, my gosh. Frank Capo said she could give you some tips. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. You know, you know what I'm thinking? When, I, when this is all over, I'm going to go into business. I'm gonna, when the quarantine is over, I got an idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a lot of people, you know, like, make the mistake. They open up stand-up comedy clubs. Yeah. You know, and they don't know what they're doing, and the clubs close like a month later, and yeah. everybody's, eh, <laughs> I lost all my money, because they're, they're idiots. They're right. Not. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, you got to try the new concept. Yeah. Stand-up dramedy. Oh. Okay? For people who want to see dramatic actors in, in, a, in a nightclub setting. Oh. All right? So, yeah, what would that be? So, uh, this, is a club, this is a stand-up dramedy club, right? right. So, uh, you know, like the MC would come out, and he'd say, all right. Our next dramedian, dramedian <laughs> Get has performed Strindberg, Ibsen, Chekhov, and recently acted in a one-man, four-hour experimental reenactment of the trial of Sacco and Vinzetti that the New York Times called interminable. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage the dram dr dramatic stylings of Mickey Klempman. Mickey Klempman. <laughs> Here's Mickey Klempman. Can you get a little applause? Yeah. Thank you. Keep it going for our MC. He was recently diagnosed with colitis. <laughs> well, I just broke up with my girlfriend. She left me for another man. She said, I need my space. I said, oh yeah, you've ruined my life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Stand-up dramedy. Wow. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. It was so rough. It was so rough that criminals roamed freely and broke the law at will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Arch. Here comes Mickey's big closer. Okay, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I bought a dog. I think my dog might be anti-Semitic. You know how I can tell? He hates the Jews. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that your time? That's that's all. That's my time. That, that's that's my time. And and speaking of time. <laughs> By the way, Mickey Clement is available for children's parties. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Well, listen. This has been a, a fabulous waste of your time and mine. I hope you've enjoyed it. Heather Thornton had a wonderful.
Heather Thornton had a watch party. Thank you for having a watch. We got to thank people more often on the. Well, you, but that's your job. You. Oh, I'm doing my call out. Yeah. Who do you, Who do you got there? Let's, I got. I got we get, a, uh, Annette Bartoli Dorman. Wow. Chris Phillips is watching. He's a talent. Yeah, Do you know Chris Phillips? Jesus He's a big talent. Hon. She wants to know if I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, hon. Uh, that's all the time we have here on the Dave Koenig Show on Facebook Live. Tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do this every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you missed any of our great shows, go over to the Facebook page. Uh, uh, what is it called? The Dave Koenig Show Streaming Live. Yeah. And then we archive all the shows. You should go and watch them all. And uh, here, is this uh, backwards writing? This is this yeah. is the right way. Go on YouTube and subscribe to Dave Koenig TV. Go on Twitter, at Dave Koenig. We told you about that. And go on my website, uh, DaveKoenig.com. You can see me on all the big TV shows. Uh, what was I on? Uh, you were on... Maisel? Mrs. Maisel, Mrs. Maisel, Blue, Blood. Blue Bloods, uh, Blacklist, uh, The Enemy Within, uh, Hunters, Hunters with the, the Al Pacino oh show. My God. Oh, it's fantastic! Tune in tomorrow. Um, oh, by the way, I, we're awfully sorry, uh, uh, we ran out of time. And uh, uh, Melvin Exotic, uh, the Kenosha, Wisconsin's uh, premier uh, private zoo owner, with his one animal, uh, yeah. a Rottweiler with sensitive gums, uh, is in quarantine. Couldn't make it on the show tonight. We'll try and get him back tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much. Good night. I love you too, Chris. It's good to see you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Da 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 da. Yeah da 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 da. Okay. <laughs>